Hi, I'm Ross Mike from RossTraining.com. What I'm going to do in this brief video is talk about this homemade, inexpensive dragging or pulling sled. This particular sled here was recently demonstrated in a compilation video that I loaded last week. Now, in the time since, in just less than a week, I've received several questions about the sled since I demonstrated in that video. A lot of people were asking about what is the sled, okay, how did I build it, how did I go about attaching the manila rope to the sled, and are there other exercises that one could perform with a sled like this. So let me address some of those questions here quickly within this tutorial. For starters, what is the sled? All this is is a saucer sled that children would use to go sledding in the snow with. Okay, it's made out of metal, so it's going to be pretty durable. There are rope handles on each side that came with it. The only piece that I've added to it is a piece of bungee cord here, which you can see I can hook to each handle to keep the weight in place that I load into the sled. Now, in terms of durability, I've had this particular sled for six or seven years now, so it's obviously lasted a long time. You can see that it is a little bit banged up and just from putting different weights on and dragging it outside over the years, but all in all, it's still holding up pretty well. And I think about other dragging sleds, other homemade options, it's probably more common to see a tire used for a dragging sled. A lot of folks will take a moderate sized tire and run an eye screw or eye bolt through the tire, which they can run, and then run straps through the eye bolt to perform a variety of different pulling or dragging exercises. Now the reason that I went with this saucer sled was that I wanted something that could be used on grass without ripping up the lawn. Because of the smooth nature of this type of sled, I can drag this back and forth on my grass without any problems. If I try to do that with a tire that has a good amount of weight on it, it's going to eat up the lawn. The tire sleds that you see are more often used in a large parking lot or an empty strip of road where you're not going to be dealing with any automobiles. I don't have anywhere like that to use a sled, so again, I wanted something that could be used on grass. Now, in terms of cost, I bought this again six or seven years ago, so I couldn't tell you exactly what I paid. I want to guess it was probably $20 or $30. Don't quote me on that, but either way, it's not going to be all that expensive to find something like this. One thing I will say, though, is if you do go out looking for a sled like this, be sure to buy a metal sled. You're not going to want to buy something like this that's made from plastic if you're going to be loading a considerable amount of weight on it. Use plastic, it's only a matter of time whether you're dropping weights into it or you're pulling it outside, you go over a rock, you've got a lot of weight on there. The, this plastic sled is probably going to crack on you. With this sled here, if you hit a rock or you drop a weight on there, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a dent in there. As you can see, there's some dents in the bottom. But it doesn't impact the functionality of the sled at all. Now, in terms of attaching the vanilla rope to the sled, it's actually quite simple. I have a quick link connector here at the end of this rope, which can attach to the rope handle and be ready to go. Now, in terms of attaching this connector to the manila rope, all that I've really done is taken a thin piece of white rope and tied it off to the manila rope. So there's actually three different ropes here. I have the 25-foot manila rope. I have this white rope, which goes all the way down to the end of the duct tape. Then I have a third thin piece of rope, which I cut into strips, probably about eight or ten inches long, where I just tied this white rope off to the manila rope in several different places. I then took duct tape and wrapped it around all those knots just to keep everything secure in one place. Now, it may look crude. It's not the fanciest setup, but this particular rope here is attached to this manila rope as good as it needs to be. Okay, I've had this connection now for over six years, and I haven't had any problems with it in terms of falling apart. So, if you are looking to perform that exercise that I demonstrated, which is similar to a tug of war against a heavy sled, it's very easy to set up. It's a great exercise, essentially a full body strength movement. You're going to be pulling with the lower body, the core is involved, upper body obviously. The thickness of the rope is going to call on your hands and grip. Okay, they're going to be fatigued as you continually work back and forth. Now. In terms of other options for the sled, that's obviously just one of many exercises that you can perform with a sled. Another option for a sled like this, you could attach some type of harness around your waist, around your upper body, and you could drag this frontwards, backwards. Okay, another thing you could do is take a suspension trainer and attach it to your sled, whether you have one handle or two. Okay, so you could perform 
some different pulling exercises. You could push, again, one arm or two. What I have here, this is just a cam buckle tie down. I demonstrated in the past how these can be used to create an inexpensive suspension trainer. You can also take your suspension trainer, attach a handle. This is just a triangular um, playground ring handle. Attach the other end of your cam buckle tie down to your sled. And now I can start to pull this back and forth. I can attach two of these again to work with two arms or one if I wish. So when you think about possibilities in terms of different exercises, there's really endless options that you can work with this inexpensive sled. So if you're thinking about purchasing something like this for $20 or $30, you're going to have something that's going to last you a lifetime. As with anything else throughout this channel, if you have any other questions about this or anything else, by all means, email me at ross at rostraining.com.